Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Code Faster, Better with AI Tools for Salesforce Developers Breakout session. Happy to be with you guys today. Happy to be with you guys online at Salesforce Plus. And we're going to start by looking at our forward-looking statement. Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make your decisions based on features and products that are currently available. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inspiring us to create amazing developer tools for all of you. I'm John. I lead testing and quality products for a platform developer experience. I'm joined today by Ken, Pooja, and Ravid right here that are, are going to come up in a second. And I want to also introduce you to Benjamin. Benjamin is a Salesforce developer working for eBikes. And he loves doing you know, traditional Salesforce development, writing code, developing Lightning Web Components, all of that stuff. And he uses a couple of tools primarily. Code Builder, our cloud-hosted IDE, runs for, from his browser, preloaded with packed uh, Salesforce extensions ready for uh, Salesforce languages and the frameworks that he cares about in his line of work, and easily allows him to follow a source-driven development approach, connects to GitHub for uh, source control, connects to orgs, and allows it, him to deploy and retrieve metadata as required. He also uses Salesforce Code Analyzer to ensure that this code is free of problems around security, around performance, around, say, code styling, all of that stuff across Apex, all of C, and many other languages that he might touch on during his course of Salesforce development. Codeanalyzer is running automatically in the ID as he creates new files, as he opens them, as he saves them. And with this, he'll keep being happy as a Salesforce development. The problem is that we are in a new world with AI coming into the picture. And eBikes wants to build better solutions for their customers for their in-house staff, for their salespeople. And that means that people like Benjamin, developers, are being put, placed under pressure with higher expectations than ever around the fact that they need to actually innovate, ship in that innovation continuously, while ensuring that all of these new AI-based solutions are of high quality. And all, with all of that said, he needs to still remain agile and be able to deliver on time and get e-bikes to be successful. And that means that he needs a new and upgrade a set of tools. So this is what we're going to go walk you through, guys, today. Our AI tools will help Benjamin write better code faster than ever. We're going to go through tools that uh, help you to automatically generate code. We're going to tell you how you can actually easily load test that into your, into your sandbox de developer environment, how you can actually test during your DevOps process, all of that. And importantly, all of these tools are talking to each other. They're all integrated and allow you to actually have a consistent developer experience, regardless of whether you're a local developer or even a pro code developer. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Ken to talk about Agent Force for uh, developers. Thank you, Ken. Here you go. Thanks, John. It's not on? There we go. OK. Again, for all of you online, hi, I'm Ken Lewis. I'm an engineer here at Salesforce. And I'm here to talk to you about Agent Force for Developers. Thanks for being with us. Agent Force for Developers is a set of generative AI-based tools uh, in your IDE that help you with Salesforce programming languages. It's, uh, it's helpful for a set of the routine day-to-day -day activities that Salesforce developers are doing. So it can help you to generate code with our inline autocomplete feature or our dev assistant. It can help you to get a better understanding of code that you're not familiar with or haven't looked at in a while uh, with our dev assistant as well. It can help you understand best practices on the Salesforce platform by asking it things like, what's the best way to do a bulk Apex job, things like that. It can also ask you, help you with very specific things, which we'll see in a minute. And also, it can help you with generating tests, which is something that many customers would like help with. Let's take a look at one of the coolest new features of Agent Force for Developers, which is Dev Assistant. Dev Assistant is the chat-based uh, interactive interface on the left-hand side there that understands natural language queries. And this interface allows you to interact with XGen, one of the large language models that powers these features behind the IDE. 
it allows you to ask for general questions, like what's, what are some Salesforce best practices? It al also allows you to ask really specific things about the code you're looking at. So you could say, how can I refactor this method to be more efficient and performant, and see what kind of a response it gives you. Best of all, it's iterative, so it understands the last response it's given you. So if I get something that looks good but isn't quite right, I can ask it to tweak that previous response, and it'll get me closer and closer to the code I'm looking for. Let's take a look at a demo. Oops, here we go. OK, so now I'm Benjamin, and I'm in my e-bikes project. And let's say Benjamin got a new request from his product manager to add some functionality to this application. They have a page that lists order item details for orders. And let's say Benjamin's been asked to add a button to that page that will allow you to, allow you to send a summary email of the order to the customer. The first thing we would do is find the controller for this page. And let's say Benjamin knows he's going to start in the order controller here, which is what I have open in code builder environment here. And, but let's say Benjamin hasn't looked at this code in a while. So what would I do? I'd have to kind of read it and start to figure it out. This is kind of a simple class, so it's not too complex. But as you can see here, I can open the new dev assistant with the icon on the left. And I could start by just using one of our explain commands. So the dev assistant will start streaming a response to me in natural language. So you can see how if you're looking at more complex code that you haven't looked at in a while or that you're not familiar with, this can be really helpful to get you back up to speed with something that you haven't been interacting with in a while. I can also use it to generate code. So let's say I know I'm going to need another method in this controller to send that email in summary. So I, s I can just ask Dev Assistant, can you write a method to summarize an order and send an email to the customer. And let's see what we get. I typed an extra slash there, so hopefully that won't hurt us too much. But you see here, it, stri it starts streaming in, and it gave us sort of the class back, so we can see the, the method that we already have at the top. But it's also given us a new method here, send order summary email. And you can see how much code this has already given me. I've got a SQL query. I've got messaging down here. And I've got an explanation at the bottom of the code that it generated and gave to me. So if this looks good, I could copy it and use it. But instead, I'm going to pop over into the editor and take a look at one of our other features. So inline autocomplete works as you type in the editor. So if I hit Enter a few times here, You'll see the little sparkle icon to let you know that something's happening in the background. And then we've got some code generated here. Now, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Let's say a save order is not, is not sort of exactly what I'm looking for. Inline autocomplete is just kind of taking a guess. But what I can do is accept this, and then I'm going to just change the name of this method to send order summary email and open up the method and see what it gives me. OK, so it's going to take an order ID. That looks good. It's written a SQL query for me. I can hit Enter and see how it keeps going. You see how it's using the messaging class. And it's developing the code for me right there as I type. So I've got close to a full usable method here that I can start with. Of course, you always want to review the code that is generated by these models. You want to have a human in the loop and make sure everything still looks good before you commit this code into your projects. But you can see how quickly I can get up to speed developing that whole method with inline autocomplete. Last but not least, one of the coolest things I think is that once you do have code like this that you're happy with and you're going to use, you can use our test case generation feature to get your unit test started faster than ever. There are multiple ways to, to invoke this feature. Right here, there's a test speaker icon in the upper left. I can also right click and do generate a test here. But if I right click in the method that I just created, say generate for me a test, and then I say what file I want that test to, to be inserted into, you'll see the notification down here on the left, again, that something's happening in the background. 
the code gen model is about to write us our first test. This step is asking us, do you have any other methods that test this method? Because if so, let me know about them so I can try to get you something different. We don't have any tests for this one yet, so I'm just going to hit OK. And what it'll do is open that file that I said I wanted to add the test in, and it'll give me the start of a test here that I can run with. So we think this is really useful for covering those gaps in your projects where you might not have unit test coverage, or if you've generated some code with one of these tools and you want to make sure you're not committing any new code to your project that's not committed with tests, you can write your test manually, or you can use our new test case generation feature to get started faster than ever. So that's the demo. Uh, as you can see, Dev Assistant and Agent Force for Developer brings lots of new tools to the suite of tools that you're already used to having in your IDE and VS Code and in Code Builder. We've got code generation with inline autocomplete and uh, the Dev Assistant. We've got test case generation, uh, code explanation, and then documentation generation, which I didn't show, but you're free to try out on your own. We've got deeper integration with Code Analyzer coming soon, which will allow you to scan your code, find those vulnerabilities, and fix them quickly also. And then we'll see how, with Apex Guru, we can also do testing and debugging, finding issues and things in our code earlier, there, earlier than ever in the development cycle with the backing of these LLMs. With that, I'm going to give it over to Pooja to tell us more about the LLMs behind these new features. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken, for sharing um, the agent force for developers in action, especially the Dev Assistant feature, one of my favorites. Hello, everyone. I'm Pooja Rediwari, product manager on the Salesforce AI research team. The powerhouse behind the agent force for developers experience are our very own in-house large language models called CodeGen and XGen Code. Let's take a deeper look at these models. CodeGen, as the name suggests, is our code generating model. There are three key values that we are delivering by leveraging our own in-house models developed by Salesforce AI Research. Number one, improved accuracy. These models have been trained with Salesforce develops, developer specific data and it's optimized for better quality by leveraging the rules coming from our other developer-centric tools, like Code Analyzer and Apex Guru, which you'll be hearing shortly about. Number two, your data never leaves the Salesforce ecosystem so that you all get a trusted experience. And finally, choosing the right-sized models for the right task enables us to meet our sustainability goals. Sustainability, which is one of our core values here at Salesforce. The fine-tuned version of the core gen model is what is powering the experiences like the inline auto-completion, the test case generation for agent force for developers, and code recommendations that are coming in from our other products like Apex Guru. And if you look at CodeGen, I'm super excited to share that the open source version of the CodeGen model was one of the very first in the industries and developed by Salesforce AI Research. Next up is our XGen code model. As we started building more advanced capabilities that required dynamic interactions, like the Dev Assistant, for example, we recognized the need for having a model that is trained both on natural language as well as programming tasks. With that, we introduced XGen Code, joining our other in-house family of LLMs called XGen. If you've heard of XGen Multimodal or XGen Sales. And again, XGen Code is equipped to manage tasks that require deeper understanding, multi-turn responses, and dynamic interactions. Now let's see how these models are helping us internally here at Salesforce improve our developer productivity. A developer using a product that's powered by these models is able to save around 125 minutes a week. And we also noticed that about two and a half million lines of code has been 
accepted, the code generated by these LLMs have been accepted by a developer. And the code gen model has been trained on 80 plus programming languages. But we are seeing that it's being used for more than 20 languages here internally at Salesforce, including Apex, Java, JavaScript, Python, and others. Well, the model itself is not sufficient. The true value comes when we integrate the model with the right set of components in the right way. Now let's take a look at how Agent Force for Developers actually works. Let's start with the Dev Assistant feature. The Dev Assistant experience starts with your own prompt. For example, you can ask Dev Assistant to create a new Apex method. And this prompt goes through four different phases. The first phase is your topic classification, where we, talk, we classify your prompt as, either as in context or out of context. Your in context prompts go through the next phase, which is the important context retrieval phase. In this phase, we leverage the retrieval augmented generation technique, where the RAG system has access to your local Salesforce object metadata. Once the prompt is sent, it understands the semantic meaning of your prompt, tries to retrieve the most relevant metadata so that your code generation process is grounded. This is how we are leveraging the power of RAG and fine tuning of the model to deliver high quality responses. Now this enhanced prompt hits the Xgen code LLM. And the response from the LLM goes through a post-processing phase where sensitive information gets masked, which in turn goes through a toxicity scanning phase where we make sure any harmful content that may have been generated is contained before you get your outcome. And what's truly amazing about this is that it is iterative. It's not a one and done deal. Dev Assistant lets you iterate on your outcomes, iterate on your prompts. You can ask follow-on questions, and it really tries to generate the response by understanding. Now let's take a look at how the code completion feature works. Well, the code auto completion feature is one of the most demanding features in Agent Force for Developers. This is because, number one, it has to be really quick. It has to adapt to the developer's typing speeds. Number two, this is a very high volume use case, just because the nature of the user experience. Number three, it has to understand the context, the context before and after the user's cursor. Number four, it cannot overfire this request, right, when the user does not really intend to have the system auto-completed for you. And finally, even though we source the data very, very carefully, there is a chance that the model can hallucinate and give a response that could look completely legitimate but sometimes harmful. How are we going to handle all of this? In order to tackle these challenges, we have a workflow. First, we have a trigger model right in your ID. It gets triggered when a user request is fired when the user intends to get this order completed. Once the trigger model fires the request, then we append, we try to collect the information, like before the cursor and the after the cursor of the user's um, intent. We append that information along with the open file, so information from the open file, including the method signatures and the class signatures. Now using all of this information, we compose the prompt. This prompt hits the LLM. Here, we are using a fine-tuned version of the code gen LLM, which is equipped to handle low latency use cases like the code autocompletion, and also handle high volumes of it. And once the code gen model gives a response, we get multiple responses here. Then we go through a re-ranking phase where we rank the responses and try to get the most relevant. Once that code is generated, there is a post-processing phase 
where we make sure all toxic content gets screened. And finally, the code gets completed. I hope this gave you a glimpse of how Agent Force for Developers works under the hood. Salesforce AI research follows a three-step process to bring all of this AI innovation into your hands. First, our researchers advance the science and build foundational models and data sets. Sometimes we open source those. These initiatives then go through an incubation phase. We incubate our work with select customers so that we are able to test and tune our work. And finally, it lands in our products like Agent Force for Developers, the Atlas Reasoning Engine, or Apex Guru, to name a few. If you want to learn more about all of the innovation that's happening within AI research, please check out our website and follow us on X. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ravi. Thank you, Pooja and Ken, for the great overview on Agent Force and all the cool state-of-the-art AI models that the team has developed, which powers all these great developer experiences. Hi, everyone. I'm Ravi Raina. I'm the director of product for Scalability Products. If you've heard of products like you know, Apex Guru, which we'll cover soon, Scale Test, or, or Scale Center, you know, that's my team. Now, I want to take a step further. We have talked about how we are leveraging you know, AI models in our developer experience to provide you know, great experiences to our developers, to write code faster, optimize their experience. One of the major problems we are trying to solve for a lot of our developers is uh, oftentimes when developers are writing you know, Apex code, uh, it, it has you know, anti-patterns which manifest themselves at production or at peak loads. With Apex Guru, we are trying to, uh, to solve these problems at scale for a lot of our developers. So what are the key challenges faced by, you know, as an example, you know, Benjamin? So what are some of the blockers that hinder the road to, you know, to writing scalable and performant code? Oftentimes, a lot of our developers have very complex customizations. You know, Salesforce as a platform, we offer a lot of options to our developers to build and, you know, develop customizations. That results in complexity, and sometimes it, you know, increases over time. It is very hard for uh, developers to keep up with uh, best practices, especially when it comes to writing scalable code. Oftentimes, you know, developers like Benjamin are under you know, strict timelines to deliver products, deliver features. So oftentimes, they inject certain anti-patterns. And when it comes to scale and performance, it's sometimes very hard even for experienced developers uh, to know and find out these anti-patterns while they are in the developer experience. So oftentimes, if you're on a dev sandbox, you write a piece of code, you do some limited unit testing or scale testing, it will be fine. But if there is a critical anti-pattern in your code and that gets pushed to production and you're, test, you're running your application at peak load at very high volume as your R scales, that's when these critical anti-patterns manifest themselves. And this is, these are, this is very subtle errors, and sometimes it's very hard to detect. So what is an anti-pattern? An anti-pattern is a piece of code, which you know, is an innocent piece of code, which seems to work fine um, on a limited scale. But when it comes to you know, having a very large org, and when you're running your application at peak load uh, for a given moment, that's where they manifest themselves. So a classic example is a sock fill in a loop. So this is a very expensive operation, because you're making calls to the database. And if you put that uh, in a loop, or you know, sometimes you've seen customers putting it in a you know, nested loop, then it gets executed you know, hundreds of thousands of times. So it takes a big hit on performance and also the dbcpu another critical anti pattern is you know get global describe uh, so it's again a very memory intensive operation oftentimes you don't need to call to get, get global describe but you can make a smaller call to s objects to just get the, the objects that you're interested in but oftentimes we have seen you know developers uh, use it you know many times uh, in in, the, in a particular class so we have partnered with you know, Salesforce AI Research for over several years and worked with a team and a lot of the models that you know, Pooja talked about, and then trying to solve these problems during AI ML at scale. So we have this code gen series of models which we have trained uh, on to detect critical anti-patterns on Apex. And since we have also uh, access to all of your you know, runtime you know, production data, we are also able to identify the impact of these anti-patterns. So like I know a lot of you developers don't have time to fix uh, you know, thousands of anti-patterns. So you would need help from you know, Salesforce to help you guide to look at the top you know, 10 or 20 things that you need to fix 
ASAP. So with that, with Apex Guru, we just don't on, uh, not only detect the entire pattern in your code, we also provide LLM-powered code recommendations and also help with prioritization. So you know what are the critical issues, which there are other issues which you know you can optimize it later. So Apex Guru, happy to share. Uh, we launched it earlier this year uh, in January and it's part of Scale Center, available under Scale Insights. And today we have almost 6,000 customers who are actively using the product. So one of the key feedback we received from many of our customers since we launched Apex Guru is that you know this is Apex Guru is great. Uh, we identify you know all the hotspots and scale issues in production uh, at runtime, but oftentimes you know it can be late because at that time your org might already have been impacted. You know the performance is slow. You're hitting a lot of critical governor limits, so not a great experience. So is there a way we can help us prevent writing the entire patterns in the first place? So. Uh, over the last six months, you know, our team has partnered with uh, the developer team here, with Ken and John, to trying to see is there a way for us to provide the same uh, insights to detect these entire patterns while you are writing uh, Apex code. So we are starting a pilot where now uh, all the Apex Guru insights uh, when it comes to detecting entire patterns, you can quickly know while you are in the developer experience. So with that, you can detect these uh, performance issues much earlier. Hopefully, uh, you have much higher quality code uh, in production. And then over time, what our expectation is, if you're actively using Apex Guru in IDE, you will have less and less of these you know, scale hotspots and issues uh, coming through Apex Guru in production. So let me spend a couple of moments to show you what we have built in Apex Guru in production and then go to the developer use case. So this is Apex Guru you can currently access under you know, Scale Center, under uh, uh, Scale, Scale Center, and you will see there is a Scale Insights leaf where you can uh, access Apex Guru. So there are four key features of uh, Apex Guru. Uh, th this is generated uh, on a weekly basis, so you have these weekly reports and insights and you can select the latest report. And what Apex Guru does is that it's, it looks at your last week's uh, production org or a full copy sandbox or whatever is the use case, and it identifies these critical anti-patterns, and it also uh, helps with prioritization. So it, in this case, for this org, Apex Guru has found uh, 13 code recommendations. So you have critical, your major and minor, and what it does is that you have these recommendations where it tells you what is the anti-pattern, what is the Apex uh, class where it detected it, and it also goes to the recommended, uh, it also goes to the exact line of code where it detected this anti-pattern, and then also provides the LLM powered code recommendations. So with Apex Guru, uh, I mean, we have worked with a lot of our customers during the pilot phase of it uh, to you know, test and vet these, uh, the, because we understand this is we're asking you to make changes in your production code. So these are very high performance models with you know, high 90s accuracy, and we've thoroughly tested it before we went GA with it. The second feature we have is SOQL daemon analysis. So it detects entire patterns in uh, your Apex. If you have uh, an embedded SOQL in a, in a class, it will detect that. We are also upgrading the model, working closely with you know, Pooja's team to make sure we also have the same recommendations uh, that we see in code. The third feature we have is expensive methods. So here, uh, Apex Guru looks at your last week's uh, production you know, telemetry, looks at your peak load. That's where you know, a lot of times you have scale issues. And it tells you, gives insights on what are the critically expensive and most expensive methods, of, which is usually which consume a lot of you know, uh, app CPU. And finally, we have these unused classes and methods. So this is a piece of code where a lot of time customers have, you know, have a lot of legacy code which they're not using, not executing, but they're sitting in their Git repo. So it leads to you know, cognitive overload, introduces new, sometimes new bugs. And so with this feature, we are trying to alleviate this problem as well so the customers can clean up their repo. Any, give to the, uh, the code, builder. code builder. No, no, no. It's not here, it's the, uh, the other one. So now what have we done to take this a step further? So as I mentioned, we have been working with uh, the, the developer team to make sure to add these AIML based insight right in your IDE. So this is an example of uh, a class and your, let's assume Benjamin has written this, this class and now uh, you want to make sure that does it have any entire pattern. So it's as simple as that. Just click on the class and say, use, select this extension, scan this file for performance issues with Apex Guru. 
So in this case, code analyzer is now looking at the class, looking to make sure and are there any entire patterns that you know Benjamin has written here? Wow, there are 13 violations. So now as a developer, you know that you know before you check in this code into your repo, there are these certain entire patterns. And Apex Guru also provides prompts uh, on what exactly, uh, which line it found the entire pattern, and then how do you fix it. So in this case, you have uh, 13 of these violations. So all you really need to do is uh, look at the Apex Guru suggestions and replace this line of code with the other one. And most of these entire patterns will disappear. So with this in, uh, uh, extension in Apex Guru uh, in IDE, what we are trying to is you know partner with you much early on in the development life cycle and make sure you write high quality, high performance scalable, scalable code. So you have less and less of you know performance and scale challenges when you deploy your uh, code to production. So this is an example of an early pilot case when we were just starting to build the model and trying to vet it with our developers. So this is an example of the impact we have seen with Apex Guru for many of our customers. So in this case, uh, for this particular org, uh, the developer had put a lot of you know SQLs in a in a loop uh, in many of in many places, and the DBCP was you know six to eight oscillating in that range for a typical day. And then the customer implemented the Apex Guru recommendations, you know, optimized their code, and after that we saw a dramatic drop in uh, the DBCP. It went down from you know eight to two, so almost you know seventy to eighty percent improvement. So this is just the critical recommendation. So we have seen pretty good outcomes uh, with Apex Guru for you know many of our customers as we have scaled up this product. So this is all about Apex Guru. I hope you found it interesting and start using the the product soon. And very soon we are starting the pilot. So hopefully many of you join us. You know give us early feedback on the product. You know partner with us on the roadmap. Uh, but we have more to come. Over to you, John. What else is going on in developer space? Thank you, Ravi. All right. Okay, so let's see what's what's coming next for us in our world of AI tools for you guys. We are introducing Codenalyzer 5. So what we've done is to actually build it from scratch. So instead of just reusing Codenalyzer, the current GA version, we decided to create a new version of Codenalyzer from scratch for this new AI world. This means that it's going to deeply integrate with Apex Guru not only at the IDE, as you, as, you, as you saw earlier, but also in all, all other developer experiences. So think uh, the CLI, think DevOps Center, all of those will be able to leverage Apex Guru capabilities, but also Agent Force for developers. We're going to go much deeper on that particular integration. We're going to be able to give you code recommendations and fixes for pretty much every problem that Codalyzer can detect. In addition to that, we are adding new engines. Engines are basically open source scanners that we include within the Codalyzer experience to detect particular types of problems, right? And what we're doing here is add new engines such as our regular expressions engine that allows you to now scan for inclusive code, so getting rid of old terminology such as master and slave that you might have in your particular uh, code base. We're going to add an engine to scan flows for problems. We're going to add the ability for you to bring in your own engines, your own scanners, and plug them into Codalyzer 5 and therefore into your entire developer experience. And then, there's a single command to run all of this. One single command that, that runs and scans your entire code base and gives you consolidated output across all problems it might have found. In addition to that, if there are problems, you can also get enablement resources on how to avoid them going forward thanks to our integration with uh, well architected. And following our principles of progressively powerful, we are making Codelizer 5 much more configurable than before for all of our advanced users. That means that you can organize your rules in whatever way you want, using your own custom tags, using your own custom severity levels. You can add your own rules using a single YAML-based file that we now have, and I'll show that to you, to you guys in a second. Everything that you see here in bold, you can test today using a single command in the terminal. You can install Codalyzer 5 CLI pre preview, and it runs alongside the existing version of Codalyzer without any problems, because these are entirely new commands for Codalyzer. So you can just play with it side by side, give us feedback. We love feedback from you guys. And you can get started. Developer preview, my hope, you'll see that in, in the roadmap, roadmap in a second, is that early next year we're going to get this to GA. But first, let me introduce you to two new products that we've been working on that we've never actually talked about publicly before. This is data seeding. So imagine that scenario where you have a developer sandbox that you just created, and it's empty. There's no data. There's 
all sorts of metadata there, but there's not much data to test against. And if you're developing a serious solution, you really need to have some high quality data to test against. Data seeding allows you to migrate data from any environment into your sandbox and ensure that that data preserves all records in, um, in terms of relationships, so you can load accounts, contacts, opportunities, all as a bundle, all interrelated together, will preserve record relationships. But more importantly, if you, don't, if you don't want to actually have real data loaded into your developer sandboxes, you can use AI to generate data using your production uh, instance as a grounding for that data. So that means you're going to create data that is inspired by the one in your production environment and load that into your developer sandbox. Available as a pilot starting in October from the CLI. If we have time, I might still show that to you guys. Let's see. And also, DevOps testing. Happy to introduce that to, to you guys again, again today. We are adding a new layer of testing on top of DevOps, te uh, of DevOps Center. That means that throughout your entire DevOps pipeline, you are now able to automatically run tests. And when, when we're talking about tests, we're talking about the likes of Salesforce Colonizer for code scanning, but also end-to-end -end UI tests and other types of tests in, in future as well. This means that you're going to end up getting fewer problems in production where they're actually quite costly and expensive to fix. And thanks to quality gates built into DevOps testing, you're going to be able to block changes from progressing in your DevOps pipeline unless they meet certain quality criteria. With this uh, pilot that we're actually releasing in a couple of months, you're going to be able to set up a test strategy unified across multiple different test providers, Salesforce Code Analyzer, but also partner tools such as Copilot Robotic Testing, Provar, Quality Clouds, and Tricentis. Bring them all together and with a unified experience, be able to see those tests running, see those results, see your changes being actually tested, and block changes that don't meet that, those quality criteria. And with that, let me walk you through the world of uh, Code Analyzer 5. So I am here. Uh, Code Analyzer 5 today is available as a, as a CLI developer preview. So I'm Benjamin, and I'm going to learn a little bit more about what Code Analyzer does and what capabilities it has. So I'm going to start by using SF Search and just type code, and automatically you're going to see code analyzer commands coming in. We have a code analyzer command for rules, one for run today. I'm going to start with rules. I want, I want to learn a little bit more about uh, what rules are available to me in the world of uh, code analyzer. So I also have this additional parameter called rule, rule selector. Let me just increase the size of this a little bit. Rule selector that allows me to define exactly what I'm looking for. So I can just say all, and then it will just show me all the various rules that Colonizer will be scanning for in this particular project, which is around 400, by the way, across all sorts of different engines that we have configured here. But I can also just filter down. I want, maybe I want to look at PMD rules with severity 1 and 2. And let's see what, what we get here. OK, so there's a fee for PMD. But I can also mix and match with PMD. And also what, what, what about our new Regex engine as well? So you're going to see a few extra rules there around inclusive code and, and stuff like that. And look at this. I can also come here in my rule selector and put custom. Now, this is a, a custom tag that I created to organize my rules in a way that actually makes sense to me. So there's a few rules that are, have that tag there. So how do we actually come up with this configuration? So if I scroll down here, you'll see that I have my Codonalyzer YAML file there. And what it does is basically allows you to literally just go here, type in your rules, the rules that might, might already be existing in your, in your uh, engine, such as PMD and so on. I can define my tags. I can define my severity levels by rule. I can easily configure all of my other engines within Code Analyzer. I can add my own rules, such as this rule to check for to-do comments in code, thanks to our new Regex engine. And then, once this is configured, I can just run this particular configuration. I want to maybe maintain that rule selector for custom, and just do run. And Colizer will run just for those particular rules that I've tagged with, uh, with custom. Now, it will do that in different formats. I have a little kind of table format that we're going to get here for some problems that it might identify. I can also do uh, like a detailed view that will provide me a little bit more detail on each violation that it will identify. With the advantage being that even though Code Analyzer 5 runs in the CLI, because I'm in the world of Code Builder here, 
I can actually go here and click. There's a violation around. There's a comment that has a to-do. I can actually go here, click, and it takes me immediately there, even though I'm using a different version of code in the, in the IDE itself. So all of this work works really fine. But even more interesting is our new shiny HTML output. So imagine I actually run all the rules. But this time, I'm going to um, create an output file, output.html, right? So this will give me some additional information that will make it easier for me to actually navigate through the problems I might have in my code base, right? So this, this generates my output.html file. It takes a little while, but not too long, to be fair, and just and found over 1,000 problems, by the way, in this particular code base. There's going to be an output HTML file. I'll quickly download it and open it here. So you guys can see, this is our new HTML report. And that allows me to easily group uh, problems by, say, file. So I can actually navigate throughout my code base, see what problems are. I can filter down by severity levels, like the severity 5, this is what I have. I can easily come here and enter my custom tags and see which rules associated with, those, with that custom tag show up here. So I can have full control over all my problems and what's happening here. And of course, this is not the only output we provide. We provide all the outputs that you might need to integrate Colonizer with CI CD, like Sarif and so on. But also look at this. If I click here on this particular violation, operations with limits in loop, I can also see links to well architected and learn a little bit more about that. So I can try to avoid this particular problem in the future. And with that, let me quickly jump into something else, which is this vision that we're building towards in terms of bring, bringing together code analyzer and um, agent force for developers. So uh, I'm Benjamin. I'm working on my project here. I'm adding some capabilities around opportunity management. I'm writing some code myself. And now I want to just run code analyzer against it. And I'll do that through Dev Assistant. So I'll go here. I'll type a request for Dev Assistant to start running code analyzer. That happens automatically. By the way, I actually want to run it every single time I'm making changes. So I'm going to say yes right here. And then I can go through each of the problems, say a hard-coded ID here. here. I'll f fix the problem. I'll get a code recommendation there in the, in the Dev Assistant panel. I'll accept it. Note the diff style uh, UI here, right? Same for the next problem. I'm going to go ahead and fix it. That's great. Now I'm going to continue coding, and this time with the Dev Assistant. So I'm going to ask it to write a little bit of Apex that sets the priority uh, for opportunities automatically. I'll accept it. I'll ask it to give me a little bit of a, an explanation on this particular piece of code. And I'll get that. And I can keep improving that code with, by adding, say, say, some try catch blocks as well. So this is all quite cool stuff that we're working on. Uh, by the way, just to show you something else, this is my CLI. This is how I can run data seeding very easily. It just starts operating like that, querying my source org, it will automatically generate data using AI, and ultimately it will populate my target org. Now, this will take a couple of minutes to run, and we need to keep going. So I'm going to go back to my slide deck here. And Benjamin now has all of these amazing tools to play with. And so do you, by the way. So you can start play, playing around with them, giving us your feedback. Let me tell you about what's coming. We talked about what's new in Spring 25. Uh, Agent Force for developers will start to have better capabilities around uh, uh, LWC and test case generation. Code Analyzer 5 is going to enter general availability. And Summer 25, Agent Force for Developers, is going to be more tightly integrated into our overall uh, app dev experience. So you're going to be able to see uh, uh, Agent Force for Developers say, generating a work item or maybe taking requirements and transforming them into code, all of that stuff com coming down the, the pipe. DevOps testing also going to enter general availability around that time as well. Learn more, take a photo. These, re these are resources that they will allow you as well to sign up for our pilot programs. I'll give you guys a, a second there. Mm. OK, very well. You can find this, by the way, in the Trailblazer community, in, our, in the developers channel as well. And just to plug a couple of other sessions, including one with, with Ravi later, later on. And finally. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for, for your feedback. And I, I do hope that you sign up for some of those pilots, start giving us some additional feedback. And that's it. Give us feedback on the session. Get free coffee. Thank you.